Now I will request Mr. Rajesh Gopta, who is the Secretary General. He is the force behind this movement. And uh, uh, in the sense that the planning is done by him, execution, etc. And he has the willing support of many people, intellectuals, academic, authors, writers, journalists, and also many people who are working in this field. So I request Mr. Rajesh Gopna, the Secretary General, to introduce his subject. Namaskar. Uh, Mr. Akbar, for uh, minorities in Pakistan, one person better than Nara Dutti Kari was there in that conference, and he read his paper about the Bhutanese refugees for the first time. First time I came to know about the concept of Bhutanese refugee in the year 1925 at Shay. I heard this phrase. Being in India and being an activist who is concerned about the issues of Hindus, I was not at all aware of this issue that 1 lakh 30,000 Hindus were driven out of that country because they were insisting on Pilaka, because they were insisting on Kumpu, because they were willing to be at the side and were not accepting the request of the, the orders of the government of Bhutan that they should follow their dress code. This issue was crossing my mind continuously since 2005 onwards. In 2007, when UN couldn't provide help, financial help, then the refugees were cooking their food on kerosene, as, on, on diesel, as the kerosene was not available. In the refugee camp, the kerosene was not available, the medicines were not available. We came across Swamiji, Swami Chaturvedi, who would be joining us after a while. Then Swamiji went to the camp, brought 40, 40 children from the camp, got them educated in Andhra Pradesh. And this way we were trying to do some kind of a help to the Bhutanese refugees. But it was crossing our mind that one day we will address this issue. And when we decided to hold this conference, I was speaking to all the persons who are concerned about these kind of issues. I was so surprised that most of them asked me, is Bhutan a different country? Hindus have been driven out of Bhutan, where they have been driven in the month of July, the July, this, this month only. Where are they living? In India? When Bangladesh is arguing of God, why Bhutanese are not being of God? So absolutely no clue about this issue was there in the mind of any Indian who is concerned about the issues of human rights around the world. Because if there is a violation of human rights in Philippines, in Burma, or any other country of the world, all human rights organizations, they start crying. But this particular issue, which was altogether forgotten, <laughs> one lakh thirty thousand persons which formed one-sixth of the population of Bhutan. One-sixth of the population of Bhutan was driven out. There was a complete change of religious demography. And it was done by the king of Bhutan. And it was being tolerated by the government of India. It was being tolerated by the people of India. And it was being tolerated by the Hindus around the world. I think that it is not the way how should we address these kind of issues. And there should be some kind of a resistance, there should be some kind of an objection, there should be some kind of protest, which should at least be registered. It cannot be there with any other community in the world that those people would be driven out of the country because they were following a, 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 a particular, particular kind of faith. And no one would protest, but it has happened. And just to make it a point that this issue doesn't go unaddressed in India, this issue doesn't go unprotested in India, we, uh, we came up with the idea of holding this seminar and the first person was Narada Dikari and he is in USA, not in the position to come to India. Then he told me that Dr. Bampa Wai, Mr. Kaple, Goran, uh, Karma Kokke, these are the persons who should be contacted. Dr. Anand Kumar, Anand Saurabh Burma, because he is the person who was there working for the Bhutan Institute in the year 19, uh, in the year 1990. In the year 1992, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and till date. I'm so sorry that he was too willing to come to this program, but he stands up in Kathmandu and some crisis was going on. His, his soul is there with us, his blessings are there with us. I thank him for all the guidance which he has given to me. Uh, then we requested our dear friend and secretary of our organization, Mr. Naresh Antilya, that uh, Naresh Ji, we want, our, our soul is crying. We want to express our consciousness, we want to express our uh, tears in the words. Then Naresh Ji has written this poem, Nishkashe, Ji. This poem will be read by Sanjana. 
I'm so glad that such a sensitive person is give is there to give the intellectual and uh, literary support to our organization. Mr. Nareesh, please stand up for a moment. I'm sorry, sir. Please let us continue. Don't disturb. Okay, okay. Sir, we are the Brahmi language to spread. For this, we have organized. Fine, Mr. Tiwari. Mr. Tiwari, if you have any objection, kindly be here. If you don't want to continue, you are welcome to go. There is no problem. Please don't disturb our. So that that this point is there. This point is there. I will request Sanjana. And uh, without uh, thanks to Mr. Nayesh Sharma for writing this great poem. Thank you.